take a tour through the Colorado Plateau. It is a unique area in the southwestern part of the United States that covers 130,000 square miles of land from Utah to Arizona. We wanted to show you one of the most unique features of the plateau known as the Grand Staircase. The staircase is an uplifted and tilted layer of eroded rock that forms a series of vibrant cliffs stretching from the Bryce Canyon all the way to, to the Grand Canyon. Many of you know the Grand Canyon, however we wanted to show you some of the features of the staircase you may never have heard of, such as Mount Zion and Thor's Hammer at Bryce Canyon. The bottom layer of rock at Bryce Canyon is actually the top layer at Zion, while the bottom layer at Zion is the top layer at the Grand Canyon. First on our tour is Bryce Canyon. It is the uppermost northern part of the staircase and is located in southwestern Utah. Bryce Canyon was not formed from erosion initiated from the central stream, meaning it's technically not a canyon. Instead, headward erosion has excavated large amphitheater-shaped features in the Cenozoic Age rock. This erosion exposed what is now known to be the most abundant conglomeration of hoodoos in the world. What is a hoodoo, you ask? Well, they are tall and skinny spirals of rock that protrude from the bottom of dry basins. They are thicker than pinnacles due to their totem pole-like shape. Hoodoos are formed by sedimentary rock and are shaped by the eroded layers of soft and hard rock. They are formed by mudstone and siltstone, but mostly limestone. In order for a hoodoo to form, it must undergo two weathering processes. The first, Frost wedging is common at Bryce Canyon due to the multiple freeze-thaw cycles during the season. During the winter, snow creeps its way into the cracks of the rocks and then freezes. When frozen, the water expands by 10%, making the cracks even larger. The second part of the weathering process is done by the acidic rainfall on the canyons. The acid slowly dissolves the limestone, which gives the hoodoo their rounded and lumpy form. One of the coolest hoodoos seen at Bryce is known as Thor's Hammer. The hammer-like shape of this hoodoo is due in part to the multitude of rock densities. The hammer portion, on top of the hoodoo, is harder and more resistant to erosion than the bottom, softer part. Next up on our tour is Mount Zion, in which we will further explain the process of uplifting. The sedimentation of Zion which is the deposition of particles carried by a fluid flow, is what created the canyon. Over 275 million years ago, Zion was a flat basin. However, after sands and gravel were eroded from the surrounding mountains, nearby streams carried that sediment into the basin and deposited them into layers. The process of deposition proved too much for the basin, and it sank. After sedimentation, the rock slithified and then uplifted. This is when the earth started to push the surface up. The process requires forces that are similar to magnitudes associated with plate motion. The process can be defined by the simple equation surface uplift equals the uplift of the rock minus exhumation, where surface uplift is the displacement of Earth's surface to respect of the geode, which is the hypothetical shape of the Earth. Uplift of the rock is the displacement of the rocks with respect to the geode, and exhumation is the displacement of rocks with respect to the surface. Uplifting is still occurring at Zan, which is evident with the magnitude 5.8 earthquake causing a landslide inside the park in 1992. The uplifting caused nearby streams to erode into rock layers, which further deepened the canyons. Antelope Canyon is the most visited slot canyon in the American Southwest. A slot canyon is much deeper than it is wide. Sandstone and limestone are the most common rock types that form slot canyons because they are easily eroded. Both are sedimentary rock type, which means they are formed by the deposition of material. Hence, a slot canyon is rare because of the combination of these rock characteristics and regional rainfall. This particular geological spectacle was formed from the erosion of Navajo sandstone. The primary cause of the erosion was flash flooding after rain, particularly during monsoon season. The erosion over time makes smooth and deep cuts into the rock which form beautiful flowing rock shapes. The 
The horseshoe bend is a meander found on the Colorado River near Peg, Arizona. A meander is defined as a bend in an oscillating river. This phenomenon occurs when the moving water erodes the outer banks while the inner part of the river holds less energy and deposits build up. The overall result of the river is a snake formation and over time the meander will get cut off from the main stream and migrate downstream. The horseshoe bend contains a variety of minerals including hematite, platinum, and garnet. The process of formation is natural and begins when the water flows around a bend in a vortex or spinning motion. The effect increases dramatically over time and dense eroded material stays on the inside bend and the outside bend becomes more vulnerable to erosion. The presence of this obstacle actually helps the stream to reach overall equilibrium. A straight river would be the shortest distance and result in the highest amount of energy per unit length, hereby causing immense erosion and creating more sediment. However, the meander formation provides more length per unit of energy. Therefore, the stream is able to carry away the sediment that it produces. As we've seen in our tour, the Colorado Plateau encompasses some of the most scenic regions on Earth. This scenery exposes magnificent outcrops of sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rocks across the states of Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah. The underlying geology of this region is ancient, dating back to 600 million years ago. Drifting along as a portion of continental crust some 400 million years ago, the Colorado Plateau was covered by rising ocean waters. As the waters receded, deep layers of sediment in different thickness were revealed. Further sedimentary material worked its way down from surrounding high country, and great accumulations of dune sand hardened to form sweeping arcs in cross-bedded sandstone. Eruptions of volcanic mountain ranges to the west buried the vast regions beneath ashy debris. Short-lived rivers, lakes, and inland seas left sedimentary records of their passage. Over millions of years, this region has become a mecca for rock lovers and will continue to inspire visitors for generations and generations to come.